What a journey these women are on. Last month in Leadville, Hannah Otto took an incredible win with a dislocated shoulder, no less. We've had multiple changes in the lead in the Grand Prix, and so I think we could have somebody that hasn't been so competitive in the series yet really kind of, kind of rise at Leadville. Something happens to everyone who doesn't win. And that's why it's so exciting when you win, because you got to be that one person without the thing that derailed your race. Wow, Hannah Otto, your 2022 Leadville champion. Congratulations. That was something that I experienced at Leadville, is I got to be the person who felt like they had the perfect race. I thought it was going to be physically challenging, but it's really mostly mentally challenging. Leadville, that was like the beginning of my downfall. It doesn't piss me off that Hannah won, but if Hannah Fincham can win that race, I should be able to win it too. This week, we have the fast and punchy mountain bike trails of the Wisconsin woods on the famed Schwamigan 40. So I raced Leadville. Three days later, I got on a plane. I went to Switzerland, spent some time in Switzerland acclimating to Europe, and then I went to the World Cup in Val de Sol, Italy, and I crashed on my face and immediately knew that I was concussed. I was disoriented, emotional, dizzy. If I didn't feel 100% in my health, I wouldn't line up because concussion is serious and the implications of racing with one would be serious. Whether or not I feel 100% in my ability to perform to the best of my ability is a different question because for the last 10 days, all I've done is proceed through return to play protocol. What I love about the sport is the ability to test myself and push myself and see what I'm capable of. When I was just a kid, so before nine years old, playing soccer, the coach said, okay, whatever team loses the scrimmage is gonna do push-ups. And my team won. The other team dropped down to do push-ups, and so did I. And the coach turned and said, Hannah, you won, why are you doing push-ups? And my response was, I don't want the other team to be stronger than me, coach. I think comparison starts to creep in when you want to be the best. For me, it's personal. It's all about the challenge. That's what I'm after. And I'll go to whatever stage it takes to find that. We cleaned them. <laughs> I've never led a series before, so I guess the pressure is a factor, but I just can't think about that. I mean, I don't have that capacity right now. We're in uh, Hayward, Wisconsin, here for Schwamm again. I'm from relatively close, like I could have driven from my parents' home in 12 hours. So I'm from a really small town north of Toronto. It's called Uxbridge. We grew up in the woods, very similar to where we are in Wisconsin right now. And I spent so much time playing outside. The road I grew up on was gravel and it was a dead end. So we would have freedom to just go rip on our bikes up and down the road. It was always part of what we did as a family. So I've raced in Wisconsin before, but never at, never at this event, so. We're doing a lot of that this year, like experiencing kind of the founding culture of mountain bike and gravel too. If you look back at the best mountain bike pros from the last 20 years, it's only very recently that those people started to only do World Cups. In the past, they got to do all these fun events. They got to do like Epic Ride Series and the, the earlier versions of this, the events that are in this series. They weren't solely focused on one thing. And 
after my experience this year, that is definitely the way to go. I know that I will always include this type of racing in my calendar as well from this point forward. Mass participation events are where the energy is. It's my favorite part of bike racing. It always has been. And I think that's a huge source of social value for our sport and our community that we can help to develop. This race is such an iconic stop on the Lifetime Grand Prix presented by Mazda. The energy and the excitement. Goosebumps and actually kind of scary. The start is, is I think one of the most epic kind of visuals that people have. It looks like the biggest parade you've ever seen. What's special about this event is it's a festival. It's not just a race. So you get to bring the family, you get to do the event, you get to hang out. You know, Schwamigan's unique, I think, because it's, one, it's the shortest event that, in, the, in the series. It's definitely going to be fast, not a lot of climbing. You never know with the weather up there. You can have a dry year where, you know, it's bone dry and it rides like pavement. And then you can have other years where it's just an absolute mud fest. And, you know, the weather the day before or the day of can completely change the, the composure of that race. Schwamigan is a 40-mile mountain bike race and it's basically going to be two and a half hours of 30 seconds all out, 30 seconds recovery. The phrase they use is death by a thousand cuts. It is just up and down, up and down, up and down the whole time. That climb to the towers can be just an absolute, you know, shit show if, it's, if that thing is all muddy. You know, I, I would imagine you'd have riders pushing their bikes and, you know, the biggest thing it'll probably impact would be tire choice. All the tread options. I mean, I'm running the fastest tires I could possibly run. I so. tend to overthink tires sometimes. What's the most amount of times before any race that you've changed your tire selection? If you can say five, 10 watts are running a faster tire, yeah, you can make up a lot of time, especially if you want to go for like a solo attack. Did you see the start? It's literally like grass hills. You just go up and over, up. And it's super slow grass. Did you see my comment on your <laughs> social media? Yes, I literally did not know. I hadn't even thought to look at the weather <laughs> before you were like, well, forecast of rain. Yeah, I left a day earlier. I mean, what pace were you holding yesterday? Well, I was doing some efforts and intervals, but like if I had it, choice like i'd rather just do three hours of intervals and be done because you know how people like get super like you're like oh i gotta take three days off or i got my like five days off riding the bike or whatever and they get really stressed like i actually really enjoy my time away from the bike i love it i think at the beginning yeah. of the year i would have been like oh sophia doesn't like riding but now i'm like no i feel the same way like keegan right He's a professional bike racer because the thing he loves the most is to ride his bike. Yeah. Or for me, I'm like, mm. I don't know, I just ran into this and now I can make money doing it and it's a sweet lifestyle. I feel like it's way more stressful than a normal job. And, uh, In a different way. You know, Sarah is performing night and day better than I thought she was going to. Ooh, I, just, I just thought I was done racing. I don't know. The hardest race I've done mentally. I'm learning so much this year. Norm Sarah comes to the start line with all kinds of emotions and pressures and like self-doubt and like all those hard things that we all deal with, but she might wear her heart on her sleeve a little bit more. I got like super, super depressed um, this season. It's hard to like be a perfectionist and care about everything all the time. And like, especially with so many parts of my job being unpredictable, but also like associated with my self-worth. As much as I try to separate, you know, that from like a result, um, the higher I have climbed in the standings, the m less fun I've had. Chris, thank you. Just kind of went into like a dark place after kind of bef approaching Leadville and like after Leadville um, and the disappointment of that. It was probably the first race that Sturm was like, I'm here to win this race. And she's never done that. And, you know, she says she sees her fourth place as a failure. And I'm like, you think that's a failure? I didn't even make it to top of Columbine. Like, <laughs> piss off, you know?
right, well, I'm gonna go ride. I messed up this year after Unbound. You know, that race, obviously, I won. That was sick. Sophia Gomez! It's hard when you start on such a high and then your performance kind of dropped. My body kind of got super run down. You have altitude, all of that. And then I go to Leadville and, you know, I'd, I'd done everything right, you know, starting to feel good, whatever. And, you know, two hours in at Twin Lakes, I'm like throwing up. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what is happening? So that's a little bit of a letdown. I go home and the person that I choose to spend my life with is this amazing, talented athlete that is having the season of his life. And it's really hard to compare yourself to that standard. And, you know, I think a lot of people expected me to win the series this year and kind of maybe dominated in a way that Keegan has. I don't have many bad days, so when I do have the days that things don't add up, it's, yeah, it, it's hard. I think women in general just really struggle with self-confidence and knowing that, that they have the ability to, to win or have a good result. Um, so I think there's a lot of nervousness, I'm sure, amongst all the women of being tired from a long season or fighting injuries. And so I know from being surrounded by it long enough that there's a lot of questions probably being asked. I still don't understand why I am the way I am. They, or that was a Saturday morning item, now I can check it off. When I was 14, I had had a long-standing relationship with anxiety. I was hospitalized with, at the time, it was anorexia undefined. And I've since later been re-diagnosed with something called orthorexia, which is a newly categorized disorder, and the, the hallmarks of someone dealing with that is extreme food restriction, but also extreme exercise. Those were both things for me, and I, I got really, really sick physically and mentally. My dad and my brother were, were had been biking recreationally, and I decided to buy my first bike, and that's when it, it flipped. It became my sin, and though I didn't love it at first, it wasn't fun at first, it was, it was a way to manage my brain. It quickly became something that was just like my purest source of joy. What's that going to do for this race, Michelle? Well, we're on grass and dirt, so it might get a little sloppy out there. What yeah. was supposed to be fast may very quickly become a muddy mess, but yeah. some of the athletes asked for that, so. This course is beautiful. The Birkebeiner Trail, historic significance in the home of Nordic skiing here in the U.S. To be able to race on it is a privilege. Welcome everyone to the Lifetime Schwamigan Mountain Bike Festival presented by Track. This classic point-to-point -point race takes riders through 39 miles of iconic Wisconsin Northwoods following parts of the famous Berkey Cross Country Ski Trail. We want to wish all of our lifetime Grand Prix presented by Mazda Riders the best of luck and we are ready to go in five, four, Three, two, one, and you are off and running. And they are off. Our open women now taking to the course here. Everyone wants a good start position, which is why no one is taking the strong line until they have to. But this wet grass can be deceptively slick as well. The course is a little slippery right now, and the uh, grass right out of the finish, the uh, the long grass is definitely slippery, and I think that. Uh, an overzealous rider could lose a front wheel in that, no problem at all. Concussion safety is something that I'm super passionate about because of my educational degrees. And so I would not race if I felt like there was any doubt in my mind 
that I was safe and cleared from this concussion. Come into a race like with a head injury is not, I mean, I know she was cleared, but um, yeah, it's scary. Like you, it sucks to like not have control of what your body is doing. At a certain point, like, you know, it's just kind of a numbers game. Like how often I swing my leg over the bike and like go out for a ride. Like how many hundreds of rides do you go on? Like one of them, you're gonna crash. Haley Hunter Smith has taken the lead in the Lifetime Grand Prix overall. She has the most at stake and therefore the most to lose. Her biggest competitors are now Sofia Gomez Vichafane and Sarah Sturm. She can keep her place in front of them. It should further solidify her lead in that top spot. It's a practice in mindfulness, cycling is. I think of it as being able to separate yourself from your thoughts and your emotions. And you usually practice that through a formal meditation. Meditation can be anything that's sort of a repetitive activity that takes you into a flow state. And cycling is that. You're out there for hours on end, often alone, pedaling circles, and yet if you're on a good ride, you don't notice the passage of time. Rose Grant is looking strong, which is no surprise. She's been climbing the ranks race after race as the season progresses, now coming off of a second place finish in Leadville. What's hard to believe is that she only has a couple races left in her professional career, but it's clear that she's driven to leave on a high note. The beginning of the season was definitely tough for me. Um, I was just dealing with like some emotional stress that has definitely like trance posed into like my performance as an athlete in training too. I mean, it, how can it not? I think having Leadville over with is, it kind of is nice because that is a race that I was putting more emphasis on. It allowed me to move up a little bit in the overall too, so I'm in fifth. Our leaders are now riding into the second aid station. That pack of 15 is still together. Oh, well, yeah, so, yeah, Sophia's in there, Ellen's in there, and Sarah was in there. They're all in the same pack. They're all muddier than we expected. Yeah. That was surprising. One rider I don't see in that group is Hannah Otto. Looks like she has fallen behind the lead pack. She's about a minute and a half behind. It could be a mechanical, or it could be physical. You can see that a steady separation has started. The party in North Woods is well underway. Looks like Sevilla Blanc is out front, followed by Kelsey Urban, Alexis Scarda, then Haley Smith with Rose Grant and Sarah Sturm all close by. Not far behind them is Sofia Gomez Vichafane, who is currently only one point behind first place in the overall, thanks to her incredibly strong start to the season. I mean, my goal is to beat Haley and Sarah. That's number one goal, right? In the point series standing, like I cannot afford to bleed more points. Our women are finally coming into the big Crocs on course, the fire tower climb. Here comes Sevilla, whose lead has grown. She is looking so strong out there. Next around the corner is going to be Kelsey Urban. Neither Sevilla nor Kelsey are part of the Grand Prix series, but this rider is. Rose Grant is right behind them, giving chase. Followed by Alexis, then Haley and Sarah. We've just received word that Sophia crashed, and we can see that she is working hard to make up that deficit. It's, we're estimating, but the, 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 the whole hiccup here is how the weather has changed our predictable time. So, Chris, come on through. Oh, so the women are going to be coming. So it's 2.30 right oh, yeah. now. So we should be seeing women any time. We should be seeing women any second here. So we shouldn't waste time talking to each other. We should yeah. be on, okay, this is going to be exciting. It's going to be great. Who's, who's our leader right now? We legitimately could be looking at a photo finish between men and women. It is really exciting. I mean, the, the fact that this that this was a Grand Prix series and we have pros out here, they haven't come through yet, but just being in here with them, it just makes it so much more real and big. And uh, yeah, it's really, really cool to be included in this. I think I just have a lot of confidence in knowing that I have you know, been faithful to the work, I've done the best that I could do in my preparation, and I'm gonna do my best on race day. It's really only like 30. There's a motorbike. Yeah, there it is. Here comes our lead woman now, Sevilla, rounding the corner with a commanding lead. There she is, coming through. It looks like Rose Grant has moved her way all the way up to first place since Sevilla isn't part of the series. What an amazing finish and a crowning achievement in a decorated career.
I had a really good day. Yeah, I had a couple mechanicals, but um, I was able to ride back from them pretty well. And I don't know if I could have caught Sevilla anyway. Because uh, it got really else, muddy. And she must have been she up just, front. Yeah, she, was, she was only 20 seconds ahead of us. There was so much And then she just like, like, where are you coming from? Hey, I was being there. Oh, good good job. Job. You guys yeah, too. baby. Yeah. Last words, it's not going to be muddy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you go. File treads were not the best choice. Nice <laughs> oh, <my> job. <laughs> what? <sighs> yes. Well, sorry, you have to go. Sorry? Oh, oh nice yay. Job. Good job. I know, which is that so good for the Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Sorry, oh, that is. Oh, I drive train every day. Just being totally honest, it was a horrible race, and it did not go well at all. Let me get you some water. It was a scary experience, and with concussion, it's not okay. Okay. My head's just not good. Not, yeah, not good. Hard to know until you yeah. do the thing, and then. No. That's like the whole race, so it's just like yeah. having to like back off, back off, back yeah. off, like trying to get the symptoms to like calm down and it just, yeah, at not a certain ready. point you're just calling and you're like, what, yeah, what's, what's happening? Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm glad you didn't try to push through it because that's when you get into the danger zone and then you crash again. I'm really glad we become yeah. friends this year. I'll try to brought a lot yeah. of people together yeah. in different ways. Yeah. That's nice. Nice. No more, no more crashing. Yeah. No more. <laughs> see them get all the stimulants away. Yeah. Fucking No, no, no. She was outside and she saw me coming on the inside and she just went. Boom. I'm pissed. It definitely stings, like, to have somebody else kind of take me out of contention right away. I feel good. Like, you don't feel fresh. You don't feel fresh. Are you not out of your okay, mouth? Okay, okay. Sorry about the crash. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I just saw the way that you were, and what I saw that you did to Emily and what I saw that you did to me was, I felt it was unacceptable. And I'm pretty upset about it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but it is racing, and, you know, next time I just won't give you, you know, like, the, the favorites get returned, you know. That's, not to, say, that's not to say yeah. it was intentional yeah. at yeah. all today. Like, yeah. I'm well, really it sorry felt, that yeah. happened. Yeah. I'm glad it wasn't intentional. It felt very intentional. No, it was but, absolutely not. Yeah. So like I say, yeah. if I would have ridden that line, I would have crashed. So. In my mind, I'm like, there's a very big difference between blocking and not allowing you to pass and having you come over and take my line on purpose to like cause me harm, you know, and that's how I feel. I race aggressive, but I'm not gonna cause you to crash. Like, there's a difference between being aggressive but safe and then aggressive that is not safe. And, oh, I mean, I told her I can't wait to take you out. Like, it just, it, like, I'm just at that point that it's like, it's extremely disrespectful and it's not safe. It sucks when someone crashes. Um, and obviously I hate to be the one, the one like involved. I would rather have, you know, no one touch my bike and just go about my way, but. But it is what it is, and she's really upset. And like, I, I get it. You know, it's her. Like, she's racing the lifetime series. I'm just here. I feel like I was placed in this community. It's not ever anything that I sought after. This community is incredibly special to me. And you know, like, I want to be a fierce competitor. But really, people will remember you for your character and um, the kindness. And, and and not that you're a champion because you won, but it's like it's the other pieces I think that 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 complete what a true champion is. You gain so much more from like putting it all out there and like doing something that has a high probability of failure than doing something that's low hanging fruit. It was carnage, man. It was such a crazy race. I'm really excited for Big Sugar. I think it's gonna be a really fun event and it'll be cool because there will be quite a huge field there. It won't just be lifetime athletes, so it'll be a really interesting dynamic. I mean, at the end of the day, we're just out here racing bikes and, you know, we have a great opportunity and to kind of, the series is super exciting and I'm very thankful to be part of it. So, yeah, we'll just, we'll see what happens at Big Sugar.